Are we ready? Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Did you already hit live? No, I just did now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I swear you do that just to aggravate me. <laughs> On occasion. Oh my goodness. Hi guys. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. Uh, this one has shaped up to be a pretty nice day. Uh, it is snowing here. And as long as it doesn't rain, I'll be happy. And we're supposed to get some rain later today. But um, I prefer the snow. Uh, a few things. Uh, we have a shout out for the week. And it goes to the stencilstudio.com. It's a, a company that I have dealt with before in the past. And have begun dealing with again now in a completely different context. But um, I've had such a wonderful experience dealing with this company. Their customer service has been fantastic. Their product is really, really nice and very reasonably priced. So I've been very, very pleased with them. And I've been having entirely too much fun with uh, playing with some of their, their stencils. And uh, I got a shipment yesterday. They had a um, trade show of sorts that they were attending. It was a uh, online version. And I had not... Um, responded to their invitation to attend because at the time I didn't really need to place an order but um, I decided that I wanted to add a few things to what I've already carried so I decided to log in and join the show well before I placed my first order she said because we haven't uh, heard if you're going to be joining us at the trade show I've thrown in a few little extras for you and for your customers. And so we have a great little extra giveaway today. Um, some goodies from the stencil studio. Um, beautiful stencils. They've added these ones, these cute little borders. This one is called tulips and uh, little flowers. So there's two of the minis. And then there's one of these. These are fantastic. This is a two-part layering stencil from the stencil studio. This one is a mistletoe wreath with berries and leaves. And I'm in love with this. I just think this is a wonderful stencil. So this is a little bonus giveaway today. So at the end of the day, we're going to choose one extra giveaway. And one of you is going to get a great set of stencils from the Stencil Studio. So if you get an opportunity to go and check them out, it's thestencilstudio.com. You can find the link in the description under the video. Great company, amazing selection. And we're stocking a whole bunch of the minis on the website right now. We just got all of our, our shipment in, so we're fully stocked on all of them, which I'm so excited. So excited. So that is my shout out for this week. It's the Stencil Studio. Dot com. Go and check them out. Um, it was also my birthday week. Thursday was my birthday. And I cannot tell you, I, I was just gobsmacked by the <laughs> volume of birthday wishes was absolutely... You're still getting them. I'm still getting them. It's crazy. Um, can't tell you how much I appreciate it. You just made my week. Um, and then... In the last couple of days, I've been getting cards and, and messages, of course, and it was just wonderful. I went down to the mailbox the other day, and the mailbox was corked full. Unbelievable. There was birthday cards and birthday wishes, and there was a couple of parcels in there that I was not expecting. Um, I had a beautiful card from my dear sweet Linda Safranco, and uh, that just... <sighs> She just got me in the feels. Unbelievable. And then I get a parcel delivered from Linda. And it's this. This fabulous, beautiful colored apron. It's got a great big sugar skull on it. I love it. So Linda, my sweet, I love you. Thank you so much. You just made my week with this wonderful gift. And the other gift I got this week that came in the mail was um, from Sheila Landry. <laughs> Patrick's already pointed it out. Uh, has he? Okay, <laughs> you're, you're going to see it over my shoulder. There's a sign back there on the wall uh, made by our dear sweet Sheila. <laughs> it says, perfection should be avoided at all costs. I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's perfect. So it has a new home on the wall of my studio. I haven't decided exactly where it's going to live yet, but I, I wanted you guys to see it because it's phenomenal. But she also sent me a few other little wonderful little uh, gifts. And one of them was this. This is a brush rest. It's a little fish, little whale. It's adorable. And then she sent me this beautiful uh, watercolor case 
with the palette. It, it's just phenomenal. Beautiful gift. Sheila, can't thank you enough, honestly. I, I have been incredibly spoiled this birthday. Um, I also had, um, again, one of Sheila's cards. She sent me one of her cards for my birthday. I mean, this woman's artwork is just breathtaking. Uh, so she sent me a gorgeous card. And then um, Linda sent me a beautiful one as well. And then I, this one was so sweet. Um, it's so bright, so happy, very springy. It had a lovely note. Um, and it, it came from Sandy Barton, wishing me a happy birthday. Thank you so much, Sandy. It just, you got me. You got me. Everybody gets me. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been terribly spoiled. Renee and my husband and my daughter, they all did the same thing. Spoiled me rotten. Uh, went out to a movie last night and tonight we're all going out for dinner. So that's how we celebrate our birthday week together. So it's been a week. I've been very, very spoiled. The big 6-0 has not been that bad. Honestly, say. So far. So far. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, we get older, we get fluffy. It's whatever. <laughs> love the new hairdo oh okay <laughs> it feels like a helmet it's always either in my ears or in my eyes and it's driving me insane uh, i've been trying to grow it out so that i could change my look i've had the same type of haircut for 20 years i want to do something different and i've had to resist the urge for the last two weeks to do shave my head because it's driving me crazy. I'm not used to having it like you. I don't like it in my ears or my face nope. or whatever. And this is driving me nuts. So I'm always fiddling with it or pushing it out of my way. And usually I'm that one that gets up in the morning and goes, Whoosh, I'm done. I'm out of here. I don't like fiddling with my hair. But I have to fiddle with it. Otherwise, I look like, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> it stands up in 10 different directions. So today we're going to be painting Be My Honey. Uh, thought we'd do something fun with a Valentine's theme. And so the giveaways have a Valentine's theme too. We have three of them to give away today. And uh, the goodies in there, we have a heart-shaped brush cleaner, my favorite. I love this little stubby thing, it's great. So we have a heart-shaped brush cleaner in each of those packages. There's a set of Tombow artist pencils, professional artist pencils. A heart stencil. There's a great little heart stencil in there and a bunch of other little goodies that we've thrown in as well just to show you the love. So that is our Valentine's theme for today. We have three of those. Renee is going to spin the wheel for that. What are you pointing at? Plus those stencils there. Plus, yeah, plus we have that giveaway for the stencils from the stencil studio. So we got four. So, we got a total four. of four. So it's going to be a fun afternoon. Yes. This piece is very easy to paint. Um, all you need is a really good round brush or a filbert, and you're good to go. It's simple. We're going to do some multi-loading, which means you're going to work with a dirty brush, and it's going to be picking up more color and adding color. It'll be fun, I promise you, but there is an order to do it, so and we're going to work on that. It's a fun little background, nothing elaborate, but it does use a stencil just to put that little Valentine's flair in there, so we're going to use the heart stencil, it's the mini from the stencil studio. We have oodles of them on the website right now. Uh, I made sure that we had plenty this time around because I got kind of got caught with my pants down the last time. We did something with the background and ran out of stencils. So um, made sure that we had plenty in stock this time. And the surface that we're working with is this one. It is that six by seven inch arched plaque. You could put it on almost anything, a six by six. It'll all work. Um, so super easy surface to work with. I thought it would be fun to do them like this, put them on these little uh, arch plaques, and then just use one of the little slot stands to hold it up. I just think they're fun. So we're going to paint Gaburra daisies. Gaburra daisies? Gabura. I don't know I'm not saying that right. Gabura. Sort of sounds like a, excuse me, <laughs> Gaburra daisies. <laughs> so that's what we're going to work on today. So grab some paint brushes, pour yourself a cup of whatever blows your hair back, and if you're ready to get started, so am I. <laughs> Ooh, so out of focus. Oh, am I? Oh, good. Great start. <laughs> oh, wowzers, are we ever out of focus? So we're working with a really, really simple 
surface today. I like these. They're the cat's meow, these little ones. I was busy uh, working on the, the piece for next Saturday. And we're going to be working on um, a, kind of a craft project next Saturday. Lots of painting involved, but a little bit of crafting too. Uh, we're going to be doing a perfume tray or a dresser tray, I guess you want to call it. And um, it involves some daisies and some lilacs and maybe some hydrangea. Maybe. Maybe. I haven't figured out if we want to put them in or not. We'll see. But uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a fun little piece for uh, the dresser. So this is our surface right here. We have a pretty limited palette for this one. Uh, we're working with uh, a little bit of pink chiffon. It's all pink, you might notice. Lots and lots of pink. At least there's no glitter. <laughs> oh, well, there could be. No. No, that's fine. <laughs> I know you're fine with it. Uh, we're working with petal pink or another light value of pink. I just grabbed petal pink. That seemed to be the handiest. And uh, I have a little bit of dragon fruit. That's my darker value. And we have some carousel pink. Pretty pinks. And then, of course, we have some berry cobbler. I love this color for shading pinks. It's just such a great transparent tone, and it works well with any shade of pink. So that is our shading color. Now, the center of our um, flowers is going to be a light green, and the leaves are going to be desert cactus. Let me see if I can remember which green I use. I think it's light lime and desert cactus. Yes. So I have a little bit of light lime and a little bit of desert cactus. That is our shading color and we're going to work with mermaid's tail. This is like my new favorite shading color. I love this color. Mermaid's tail for our leaves. So for our base coat, we're going to be working with a little bit of pink chiffon. Now, this is very pale pink, very pale, and it's almost, white. it's almost white, yes. It's a very pale pink. It's quite a pretty color. I'm going to just sort of a not a very neat and tidy base coat. We just need one coat. It doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of want this to have a distressed background, so I'm not really worried about getting it absolutely perfect. Using one of my fugly brushes to... Get that base coat on. No, Linda, no glitter. No. <laughs> no. I don't know. I think it'd be fun with glitter. Wouldn't it be fun to put f glitter in the center of those flowers? I think it would be. We might have to do that. We might have different definitions of fun. <laughs> oh, I know we have different <laughs> definitions of fun. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> See, for me, I can sit in a room with, you know, 30 or 40 fellow painters and have the time of my life. That's fun. I can sit on camera and have, like, the time of my life. In front of hundreds. In, in front of hundreds of painters and just giggle and laugh and, and, you know, just create something. That's my definition of fun. Playing with paint and pencils is fun. Just like playing with food, cooking, and making yummy stuff. Mm. Mm. Renee made me dinner on my birthday. Just the most delicious hamburger I have had in a very long time. Greek hamburger. It was I think it would have been better if I actually had uh, beef chuck and lamb. Yeah, but you know what? I wasn't complaining. That was a delicious meal. Delicious. Have and it, one of the, the hardest things for me, longer? what's that? Have you noticed the days are getting a little longer? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. One day at a time. <laughs> Problem with my job is I'm up before the sun is. Yep. And by the time I get home, the sun's down. <laughs> yep. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying not to get paint all over me. I am not succeeding. 
I still managed to get it. I'm developing quite the little collection of sugar skull aprons. I like it. And some of them are so unique. <laughs> so I can wear a different one every week. So far, so good, Linda. Yep. I'm going to be learning a lot more t no, tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow and, well, tomorrow's going to be pretty easy, I think. Yep. But, uh, yeah, Monday's going to be fun because we got a bunch <laughs> of stuff to do. But it's going good. Makes for a busy day, which makes it for a fast day. Yeah, exactly. Keeps me occupied. So I'm going. I think this is a little thin for me. I think I'm going to put one more coat on. Um, I'm working on um, some information things and some video for uh, a variety of mediums. I've had so many questions about a variety of mediums lately that. Um, I thought it might be a good idea to put together some video in reference to it. Um, some techniques for applying crackle mediums, different types of crackle mediums. Um, so we're putting that together. And um, also a few um, techniques for applying different finishes. We've had a lot of um, questions in regards to that. So we're trying to... Sounded like a dog. It did sound like a dog. <laughs> that dog fell off the couch. So Lois Ann Pritchard, lovely lady. Okay. Um, she placed an order with us back in January, or in December, sorry. And um, it never showed up. It's lost somewhere out, out there. In the ether. Some, there. Somewhere out in the ether, yep. Mm -hmm. um, she messaged me today that uh, she still hadn't received it, but... To not worry about it, to not send her a refund and don't worry about replacing it, but simply make a donation in her name to the SPCA, the value of her order. So I did that this morning. What? We applied $65 to our SPCA fund. That was a hell of an order. That's a hell of an order. And uh, I packed her up a new one and shipped it out today. So one, she'll have her order, but also... Um, a donation from Lois Ann Pritchard. Right on. So that type of, of generosity deserves some recognition, I think. No so. kidding. So we are going to ship her her new order and uh, at the same time make a $65 donation in Lois Ann's name because she's just such a good sport. Mm -hmm. I'm very generous. So there we go. Lovely lady. Karen says there's special goodies in the package for your mom. Try not to eat them all. <laughs> no promises, Karen. No promises. My girl Karen is sending me some more ginger snaps and some of my favorite goodies. Uh-oh. Coconut day pops. I mean, I'm not the one you have to worry about. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, yes, she does. <laughs> no. Nope. You and Dad. Dad. Cookie Monsters. My husband spends at least an hour a day in the gym just so he can eat cookies and still maintain his boyish figure. I have, I now have access to a gym at work. Cool. I didn't know that existed. <laughs> but it has a gym in the gallery. It's very super small well, and very limited, but there is exercise equipment. Cool. For those long shifts. Yep. Like tomorrow. Ah. So the, there, I've got two coats on here. I did not want a fully opaque coat. I kind of wanted it a little, you know, some of that background to show through a little bit. I didn't, I don't want perfect. Because, you know, perfect is boring. And the stencil that I'm going to use is this one. This one is from the stencil studio. This one's really cute. <laughs> I love these little hearts. And so I'm going to position that on my surface like so. I am, however, going to use a little bit of tape to... Jessica. What? Did Jessica she just do? donated $20. Nice. Thank you very much, Jess. I'm 
grab my stents brush. And the message was, just because you're so awesome. <laughs> now, I'm going to use that petal pink for this background. I don't want this to be too in your face. So a little bit of petal pink. We're going to stencil those bright pink hearts. Your last post, Stendo. So when you're stenciling, little bit of paint. You don't need a ton of it on there. Oh. Brush is straight up and down. And then work in a circular fashion and change directions frequently. Guess whose birthday's on the 31st? Judy Thacker. <gasps> Miss Judy. She's an Aquarian. She's an Aquarium? What? Aquarian. Aquarian? An Aquarian. Aquarius. Aquarius. Makes her an Aquarian. No, it makes her an Aquarius. <laughs> I'm an Aquarius. So Aquarius. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. You're not old enough to do that. <laughs> but I know the song. You might know it, but you're not old enough to sing. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to Google that. <laughs> the age of Aquarius? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to move all these motorcycles. <laughs> so I love this pink. I, I'm not a pink person. I don't own pink. I own one pink shirt. One. Just one. Sweater. Deb knows which one it is. She's the one that convinced me to buy it. It's a great sweater. I love it. It's comfy. There we go. So I'm just going to continue putting cute little pink hearts. This is a great stencil. I like these... Uh, these minis from the stencil studio they're a nice size if you're a paper crafter if you do journaling whatnot these are the ideal size they're a three by eight so they store really easily too I um, this is what I've been storing them in this is uh, a receipt folder or a check folder um, from an office supply place and it's the perfect size holds these very nicely oops so I'm almost there I'm just going to make them I didn't want these hearts to be absolutely perfect but I do need a little bit of color on because uh, we're going to be doing some distressing now I got people tight typing in the lyrics to that song in the <laughs> chat the age of Aquarius <laughs> see this is supposed to be my year your year yeah Why I that? was born in the year of the rabbit the bunny the, yep and it is the year of the rabbit The other thing that I like about these stencil studio stencils is how easy they are to clean. Like they're laser cut. They're a little heavier than most of the stencil material that you usually see. Uh, they're a little bit heavier, so they, they actually are quite durable and they do clean up really nicely. So, so we have... <laughs> Thanks, Renee. I got that song stuck in my head now. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a cartoon the other day that popped up in my memories because I had sent it to your father at some point or another. And it was two birds sitting on a branch. Yeah. And one goes, tweet. <laughs> and the other one goes, well, damn it. Now I'm going to have that stuck in my head all day. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Stupid, but hilarious. <laughs> hey, I had Hakuna Matata stuck in my head at work. <laughs> And later on the same day, mm -hmm. I had the bare necessities from the okay. Jungle Book stuck in my head. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> I was walking through the gallery, and that's all I could have in my head. Was 
<laughs> Sakuna Matata. Oh my god. Or the bare necessities. Or the bare necessities. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's worse songs to get stuck in your head, I yeah, suppose. But I don't know why I had those in my head. Mm. Or where it came from. At least it wasn't the Be Happy song. Don't worry. Oh, be happy. now it's stuck in my head. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So I'm just going to distress these little hearts, just vertically. I just want to soften them a little. And just wear through them enough to show some of that background color. And I like going vertically because I brush the paint on vertically. So the brush marks allow the paint to get thin. So look how fun that is. Hello, Cindy. So, I like that. I'm really quite partial to that. I like that sort of softly worn look. And it's perfect for what we're doing. So, now that I've got that, I'm going to grab an angled shader. I'm going to use one of my half inch. Don't really need anything bigger. And I'm going to use that same color that we used for the hearts. And we're going to put a nice wide float around the outside edge just a soft float a little bit of color out there it doesn't have to be perfect neatness doesn't count obviously i like this you know that softer little splash of color at the outside edge and the shocking thing about this piece today there's no asphaltum in it I didn't use any asphalt, which is un unheard of for me, but it just didn't call for it. Asphaltum is for toning and aging things, and I really wanted to keep that, you know, the brighter tones of this pink, these pinks for this piece. So, sans asphaltum. So there we go. We've got a nice little float, nothing too fancy, all the way around the outside edge. Just gives us a nice soft edge. Now I'm going to dry this and then we can trace and transfer our line drawing on. We're going to use a little bit of gray graphite for that and my red uniball, my red pen. I like that gel pen. my graphite paper somebody asked me the other day how I store my graphite paper this is it rocket science I put it in a file folder um, I'm notorious I tend never to throw a graphite paper it gets extremely worn that's okay so I'm going to use a little piece of graphite paper I like the file folder it just keeps everything in place see what I mean very worn and we're going to Position our line drawing in place. I'm going to tape it in place at the top because I, I like to make sure everything stays where it's put. But I also want everything to be nice and straight, so let me do some adjusting here just so that everything is where it should be. There we go. Now, graphite paper, matte side down, unlike I did earlier this week, <laughs> traced out an entire design and it was beautifully transferred onto the back of my paper because I had my graphite paper upside down. Pretty swift some days. So I'm using one of my red gel pens. I, I like my gel pen for this, especially for involved designs where there's a lot of little things going on. I like the, the red pen because I can see where I've been. And it just makes your life so much simpler. Now you do not have to be overly 
perfect or accurate with this because we're going to stroke these petals in. So as long as you get the general shape and size in, it's all good. So that's the only thing that I'm worrying about. These Gerberas are pretty straightforward. You might have noticed I have them numbered. And so it just made it easier about color placement. Of course, you don't have to follow you know, the, the pattern that I followed as far as color is concerned. You can paint these any color you want if you want to. Uh, but the method is not going to change. Even if you decide that you don't want pink, you want to do blues and yellows and greens, knock yourself out. You do not have to follow my color plan if you don't want to. They're just daisies. I love daisies. They're a fun flower to paint. And in this particular case, extremely forgiving. And that just Rough guesstimate for the centers. You don't have to get them perfect. You'll see why when we <coughs> Pardon me. Oh goodness. Snoozing. And then we've got one last daisy down here at the bottom. Again, I don't worry too much about the accuracy as far as the detail is concerned because it doesn't really matter at this particular juncture. So we've got a center. All the leaves are in. Don't forget those little curly cues. And then we have the lettering. Now, I chose this font because it's again very forgiving it's simple doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be you know perfectly accurate as long as it's straight and level that's the only thing that matters and this is a pretty what's the word i'm looking for i don't like the word primitive it's not really primitive let's call it simplistic font it's not a primitive font but it is simplistic um and if you're not into doing this type of, of lettering, I mean, you could do this any way you want to. If you want to grab a stamp and put your own message on, you can absolutely do that. If you want to use a stencil to put some lettering in with your own little message, that's okay too. You can do whatever you like. It's your piece. The design is pretty flexible. You can do whatever you want. Maybe you don't even want to do Valentine's. Maybe you're just going to do polka dots in the background and make some bright colorful daisies and a little welcome sign or a summer or maybe it's a name for your desk. It's just a fun little sign that you can make. Easy peasy. Now the technique for painting these again super simple. The only thing you really have to do is perhaps practice some stroke work, a little bit. But even that's going to be pretty simple. So I'm almost done. I just finished. I like my lettering. I'm a fan. I'm going to be doing more of that next Saturday. We're going to be doing some, um, some pretty background work with some brush lettering. And some pretty little stroke work lilacs. And we're going to be doing some basic little uh, little daisies, little country style daisies. Okay, I think, I think, I think, I think, let me check. Yep, I think we're good. So pretty straightforward, not a, a really elaborate piece. You don't have to worry about making sure that everything is utterly perfect. This is a very loose style, so just relax and have some fun with it. So our tool for today is just a round brush. I'm using a number four. This is a black gold round, not a very good one. This one has seen better days. Maybe I've got another one. Uh, Gloria, the subscribe button is actually on the YouTube channel. Yep. So if you go to youtube.com and type in Tracy Moreau, It'll take 
you to her channel. And then you can hit the big red subscribe button there. Yep. And it'll, you'll get to see all the old videos and other lives we've done. Yep. And if you're looking for them, somebody commented the other day that they went to my channel and couldn't find a bulk of the videos. Just go up top to the menu and click on live and all of the lives will show up. Yep. Yeah. That's all you have to do. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to start with these leaves. Simply because I, we want those flowers to look like they're over top. So we're going to start with the leaves. And this is super easy. I'm going to use that round brush and some thinned desert cactus. I put a little bit of the Joe Sonia's glaze in there. Neatness doesn't count for this. These are almost watery. We're not looking for perfection. Very loose. Rough edges and all. Don't worry about it. Just fill them in. Now I'm using a fair amount of glaze in my brush because I want this paint almost transparent. Almost. Just put it in. Not a biggie. Easy, right? Not rocket science. So I'm going to dry these. I love the fact that these leaves are imperfect. This whole thing is based on just a putting color on. We're not worrying about getting things absolutely perfect. Don't need perfect base coats. We're just getting some color down. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that uh, that mermaid tail is our shading color for these leaves. Love this color. And I'm going to grab my half inch angle. And again, I'm not, I'm going to get lots of glaze in my brush. Teeny tiny amount of paint. Don't need much. It's a very dark color and it's very transparent. So we're going to shade the bottom of those leaves with just a little loose float. Super loose. Again, don't worry about getting it perfect. It doesn't matter. So just a little float, bottom of the leaf, where it would join the stem. There we go. Fair amount of glaze in that brush. Don't. Uh, it's going to be really watery, which is what we want. I had to That's adjust the exposure because it was way too bright. Okay. <laughs> we need to dry this. This one part down here is still wet. Got a little carried away with the glaze. It's all good. Just like that. Now, we're going to go to these leaves and we're going to put a center vein in. Just like that. Again, not all that neat and tidy. It's just putting a shadow in. That's it. Super easy. And that's it for our leaves. That's it. So we're going to start with flower number two, which is down here. This one right here. And we're going to use that round brush. And we're going to pick up our base color. Remember that? And then we're going to pick up a little bit of warm white. So, I'm going to find my warm white. What did I do with my warm white? My subscribe icon has vanished. That means you are already subscribed. <laughs> So I have a little bit of uh, pink chiffon in my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white on the tip. I know you can hardly see it on camera, but it will show up. Just going to, oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to rearrange this a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my palette here. I'm going to zoom out a bit here. 
I'm going to pick up that pink chiffon and you're going to pick up a little bit of warm white on the tip of the brush. Just a little. And then when you press it, you're going to get a little bit of white at one end and that pink chiffon in the other. I'm going to come down to this flower right here and we're starting with those petals that are in the background. I'm going to press down and pull back towards the center. So press, open the brush up, bring it back up to the tip so that it runs out of color just as you reach the center. Press down, pull up. Ooh, barely see that. Yeah, on the white it's really hard, but so this is that first flower. There we go. So I've got my first little flower down at the bottom. So now I have a dirty brush. So remember the color that we used for those hearts? We're going to use that dirty brush and pick up some of that petal pink. <coughs> and it's this flower. So starting with the ones that are tucked in behind, we're going to press down and pull back up. So that dirty brush effect gives you those lines, that stria. In your brush. It's an effortless, oops. Oops. Oopsie. Oh no. Oopsie. Robin Storm's son and husband have both have COVID. Oh no. Oh, I feel for them. That was just absolute misery. <laughs> I will do anything I can to avoid getting that again. That was just, ugh, I feel for them. Best advice I can give, rest. Absolutely, rest is the, probably the most important. Lots of fluids. Keep yourself well hydrated. Get yourself a really good uh, expectorant, something that's going to let you cough, loosen that cough up, because that is brutal. <laughs> so I know it looks really messy at this point, and it looks really chunky. That's okay. You're still not cleaning out your brush. You're going to go from that petal pink, you're going to go to your next darkest value, which is that carousel pink, dirty brush. And you're going to do the same thing all over again. I think there's something wrong with my carousel pink. There we go. Okay. My carousel pink just wasn't cutting it. There we are. I'm not sure why. I like these really loose petals. So you get all these streaks and lines and variations in color. That appeals to me. I like that. And don't don't panic. You can let them overlap. It's all good. So look at that. Some more pink flowers. I Oh, what is that? The brush. It's a number four or a number five round. It's not a rigger. Nope. And then this last flower over here, we're using yeah, dragon that. fruit. Dragon. Or at least I am. So press down. I like that because you're working with a dirty brush, you get all sorts of nifty combinations of colors because you've got all of those colors in your brush at this point. Uh, any holly leaves on the website? Uh, they're not up yet. I will put them up today. Um, yesterday's little incident with our SSL certificates kind of 
threw me off kilter, but now that that is fixed, I can update the website. <laughs> I was in the middle of updating the website when everything went to go in a handbag. Went to poop. Yeah. But it happens. But it's all fixed now, so it's all good. So we have a whole bunch of really loose looking flower petals. We have lighter ones, we have darker. I like the fact that we've got you know, different values of pink, which is what we were looking for. So I'm going to dry this. Looks pretty sloppy at this point. Everything we paint has an extended ugly stage. You all know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am going to switch to a smaller angle shape. I'm going to switch over to a 3 8 or 5 8 or is it 5 8 or 3 8 3 8 Jeez. Three, 5 8 would be bigger. <laughs> So this part is really fun. This is where we start creating a little more depth. This essentially just puts some texture in and the general shape. But now we're going to, you okay? <clears throat> He's got a frog in his throat. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so we're going to be working with that berry cobbler. It's a very strong color, but it's also quite transparent. So I'm going to load up my angled shader to float in a little bit of that berry cobbler. I love this color. And we're going to start separating those petals. Zoom back in. So I'm just shading the bottom of the petals close to the center with a little float of that berry cobbler. So each petal gets a little float of that berry cobbler down towards the center like so. And then the ones in behind get separated with a float. So wherever the petals overlap, you're going to put a float of that berry cobbler. So let's look at this one, for instance. I'm going to put a float there and a float there. So this one is in behind. So a little float at the center. Don't worry about whether or not they're perfect because we're going to do some work on the center as well. In behind our petals. And all this, this little float does, is just separates those petals a little bit. And you're going to do that to all of these flowers. Same color, all the way around. So, I love this berry cobbler, especially on the darker pinks. It is just such a yummy tone. And it separates petals very nicely. Let's show you where the overlaps are. I forgot to do that earlier in the week. What's that? You'll see. Uh oh. Is it a good thing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> There we go. So we've separated all of those petals. Separated those. I'm going to do the same thing to these ones here and to these ones down here. We're using the same color. And on the lighter valued flowers, it really stands out. Brushes not cooperating. 
There we go. Linda Johnson from Texas. Hello, Linda Johnson. Hey, from Texas. <laughs> I have a number of friends in Texas. Texans are some of the best people. So this is going to look a little rough for a little bit. It's okay. Do you have glaze on your brush? I do. I Instead of using water, I use that glaze. Just keeps the paint moving, keeps it open a little bit so I can adjust as I go. So there's a couple of flowers here I need to shade under and around. Just like so, so that we get nice separation of those petals so I think I'm happy I think I'm happy so again looks a little rough but it'll all come together I promise hmm. and I'm going to do shade this one last flower here with a float of that thinned berry cobbler Towards the center, I like that little, need a darker value down there towards the center of the flower. And then to separate these petals a little bit. I haven't got a really good load, so I'm going to rinse my brush and try it again. There we go. I like being able to separate the petals. I also like not having too strong a color. I like a little control over it. It is Joe Sonia's Fast Dry Glaze. Yep. So, remember what I say. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. It's on the sign now. It's never been more true than, <laughs> than in this piece. You don't really need to get them absolutely perfect. And the floats are very watery. Everything about this is very loose and very watery mm -hmm. so we're not worrying about you know, perfection because it's unattainable and it's unrealistic and it, it that pursuit of getting the perfect float the perfect highlight trying to get everything just perfect um, I think it does more harm than good especially when you're still learning as long as there's progress, each time you paint something, your floats get a little bit better, your highlights get a little bit better, your line work gets a little bit better. Forward is forward, no matter how slow. Stacy Allen. Hello, Stacy Allen. From Scotland, UK. From Scotland. Uh, newbie watching to your channel. Glad I caught you live. Hey, welcome. What paints are you using tonight? The ones I'm using tonight are the ones I always use. Uh, these are Decor Americana. The color palette is really quite simple. I did not have an elaborate color palette. Our pinks are Carousel Pink, Berry Cobbler, Petal Pink, Dragon Fruit. I have a little bit of Warm White. Our greens are really simple. A little bit of Light Lime, Mermaid Tail, and Desert Cactus. And then, of course, we have uh, a little bit of warm white, some lamp black, and some yellow for our bumblebee. Because, you know, I think a pink bumblebee would be you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to come back to that round brush now that we've got all of our shading in our flower. We're going to pick up a little bit of that light lime, which is sort of that, that limey green. You just need a light valued green in there. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, just a light ew. That's not a very uh, Gail is asking, what could you use if you don't have desert cactus? Desert cactus? Let me see here. You could use aloe. 
Aloe will work. <laughs> Sheila says, I make pink snails. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Sheila just created these cool little Valentine's pieces. Snails. They are so cute. So, so cute. If you get a chance, guys, go and check out her website. She's <laughs> friggin' adorable. So the center of our flowers is just going to be this little rough light lime. You've got something close. I don't know, like a mint, light mint or something like that. Use that. It's just, it quite honestly, isn't going to matter as long as it's a light green, like really light. So there's our light green in our center of our flowers. Neatness doesn't count. Just a rough center. Do the same thing. This little one here just gets a little bit. Super easy. When I said these were loose, I was not kidding. These are a very loose daisy. S and J's crafting space. I'm guessing this is Susie. Susie. She says, hi y'all from Denmark. Wow. Denmark. Didn't think Denmarkians? Danes. <laughs> Honestly. Denmarkians. Denmark. You do that. <laughs> I swear he does this stuff just to annoy me. <laughs> I don't. I didn't expect them to use y'all. Y'all? No, I suppose not. Y'all. Unless it's Denmark, Kentucky, or something. I don't know. Denmark. <laughs> Denmark. Yes. They're Danes. I know Honestly. they're Danes. I said it on purpose. I know you did. <laughs> like I said, I think he does these things to annoy me. <laughs> Honestly. There we go. They're Danes. They're Danes. Oh my gosh. My nerves. Oh, my nerves. <laughs> Just like um, <laughs> people from Berlin are not Berliners. No. <laughs> yeah, Berliner is a donut. <laughs> God. Ugh. So these are, as I said, super loose. We're not worrying about crisp, hard lines, none of that. It, this is super loose. Southern Denmark. <laughs> Southern Denmark. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're killing me. Oh, You're I was wondering me. why y'all was in the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> y'all. So we have a bloody League of Nations going on here. We have... Uh, Scotland. Uh, Scotland, the UK. Well, um, Scotland's part of the UK. Well, and, and like Great Britain. We have um, friends in England, friends in Denmark, and Germany. France. Christine Hairstock's in Germany. France. And France. We have great friends in France. We have friends. You have NATO. I have NATO. <laughs> <laughs> we have friends everywhere. So, and we welcome all. If you've got a paintbrush in your hand, you're more than welcome. Uh, besides, you know, even if you don't paint, just pick up the brush. We'll figure it out. So we've got a little bit of green in the center. I'm going to use this to put a nice little shadow in the center of our flower. Just bear with me. I know it's going to sound really weird, but... <laughs> They're Germans? Germans? Yes. <laughs> People from Berlin are Germans. Germans. So I'm going to put just a little C-shaped float in the center of these flowers like so with that desert cactus just like that nothing too elaborate not and i'm not worrying about it just want to create a sort of circle uh -oh. in the middle linda Sifranco. What? renee why do they call seagulls seagulls I don't know. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. Because <laughs> water chickens was taken? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> water chickens. Well, it's like cobra chickens. Cobra chickens, water chickens. Canadian geese are called cobra chickens. Yeah. With good reason, I might add. Yeah. They have teeth on their tongue. 
It, well, the first time I ever heard that expression, Cobra chickens, I didn't know what they were talking about until I read the post that originally started the whole thing in the first place. Then it made perfect sense. But yes, we call them Cobra chickens. When if you've ever met one or come up against one, you will understand why. Yep. They hiss. They <laughs> hiss and the head moves. and They're nasty creatures. They're beautiful, but they're nasty. They're evil. Yeah. Oh, jeez. What? Has she answered your question? No. <laughs> uh. Or maybe it was a legitimate question. <laughs> oh, because if they flew over the bay, they would be bagels. Oh. <laughs> That's a forehead slapper. I'm going to stick with water chickens. Yeah, water chickens. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to create a little bit of fun texture in the center of these flowers. I'm using a little, this is the yellow we're going to use. This is Sunset Gold. And I have to read the label in order to remember the name of this color. Because uh, I keep wanting to call it Golden Sunset, but it's Sunset Gold. It's kind of like that, um, this, Identipen. I can, for whatever reason, I have a, like, a mental block when it comes to the name of that thing. So I'm going to use my rigger and I'm going to put a little tip load of that sunset gold on my brush. And I'm just going to start adding little dip dots like this all the way around over that green. It does not matter if you cover the green or if there's still some showing, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you bring a little bit out over the petals, just a little, that doesn't have to be much. And a little that comes in on top of that little smudge of green that we did in the center, that little bit of desert cactus. So just rough like that. And I'm going to do the same thing to all of these. Again, neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. They do not have to be perfect little dots. They just need to be little varying sizes of dots of that sunset gold. They can be perfectly round. They can be whatever, but they do not have to be perfect. We're just creating a little bit of visual texture in the center of these flowers. So just like that. Patrick's off to go grocery shopping. <laughs> Off to the supermarket. I don't even have to make dinner tonight. We're going out for dinner. <laughs> Miss Dot is upstairs with my husband today. <laughs> I ha it is pathetic how she has that man wrapped around her her paw. It's just that dog can get whatever she wants out of them. Oh yeah. And frequently does. Spoiled. Rotten. <laughs> and don't forget this little one down here. Da -da 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 -da. Oops. Messed that up. Oopsie. I dropped my brush the other day. Are you using a rigger for your dip dot? Yeah, I'm just, like I said, they're just, I'm not worrying too much about Oh, and I got Happy Mail again on Friday. Dynasty Happy Mail. Oh, you got all that stuff. I got a complete line of Dynasty Water Lily. Cool. Yeah. I was pretty excited about that. Dynasty. And that's one of four, isn't it? Yeah, there's a couple more boxes coming yet. <laughs> a few boxes. It's a few. So we've got all of those yellow dots in there. I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to repeat that. This time we're going to use warm white. I just like how this makes everything look fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Fuzzy and fluffy. Deb wants to know why they're called Canadian geese and they, why don't they stay there? Uh, you know? Because they like <laughs> Canadians. They don't want to deal with the winter. <laughs> 
<laughs> they fly south. They fly have, south. Have you, ever, have you ever wondered why they call Canadians snowbirds? Ta da. I know. They call us snowbirds because we go south for the winter. Yep. But they should call us Canada geese. Yeah. Yeah. So our next color for this is a little bit of warm white. We're going to do the same thing with the warm white. All varying sizes. Little teeny tiny ones, nice big ones, doesn't matter. Make sure that they overlap the edges of the flower because we want this to kind of have that fuzzy look. If you get hit by goose poop from the air, you'll get brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> I swear my dog's got brain damage then. Because she'll eat goose poop. Oof. <laughs> that was one of her favorite things to do when we go to the dog park. Yeah. Uh, just <gasps> Goose poop. Goose poop everywhere. It's an old golf course. Yep. So... I like how that, see, it just makes for a fl nice fluffy center on our Gabura daisies, or Gabara daisies. Really should learn the pronunciation of that word. Gabara? Gabara. They're pretty. They're like giant daisies. And I kind of like that, th that, you know, it's a, a nice texture in here. a great deal of giggling going on upstairs. I like that texture. These are not super realistic daisies. But they are fun to do. And these do work up fairly quick. I think it would be fun to make like a spring pin on a round piece and just paint one of these daisies in the middle. I think it would be so pretty. Might have to do that. Da -da 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 -da. Super easy daisies. I like the multi-load technique. I just think it's a fun way to create a pretty flower very simply and it is very loose we're not not worrying about you know a lot of detail or a lot of structure so I've got all this texture in here come so I just want to soften these up a little bit more there we go I like it I like it and then I'm going to dry that and then we're going to go up top here to our little bee since we've got the warm white out. We have a little bee. Now he's a pretty sketchy little character. I, I and I kind of like him that way. Just make sure those dip dots are dry so I don't put my hand in them because I'm notorious for that. So uh, while I have the warm white on my palette, I'm going to base coat the wings of my bumblebee with that warm white. He's a pretty simple little guy. I'm not, I like my bees to be simple. So a little bit of warm white there. And we're going to base coat the whole thorax with a little bit of warm white. Now the reason I do that is because we're using a yellow and yellows don't cover very well. So I like to have a coat of white down. It just makes the yellow brighter and uh, then we only have to do one coat. So why torture yourself if you don't have to? So, our little bee is all white. And I'm going to use that same yellow that we used for the flowers. I'm going to use a single coat of that on the thorax of our bee. 
just because that's we've already used it and I really didn't want to introduce yet another color if I didn't need to. Um, there were some that I absolutely had to, but if I don't have to bring in yet another one, I won't. So a little bit of yellow and we'll dry that. Now I've used a little bit of orange. Any shade of orange will do, honestly. You're, it's one tiny little float. So um, usually I use a little bit of burnt, or uh, not burnt orange, orange flame, burnt orange. Um, but uh, I'd have to get up, go to my painting cabinet to get it. So I have a little bit of tiger lily here that will do just fine. I'm going to thin out a little bit of that orange. Any orange will do. I'm going to put a little float of that down the left side of my bumblebee. Just right there. That's it. One little float. Just enough to shade him a little. And I use a little bit of Bahama Blue for the wings of my bumblebee. Get it out of the bottle. Good heavens. And we just need a little float of that Bahama Blue closest to the body on the wing. Let's get this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Little float right there. This little guy is very straightforward. We don't need to have, he's not elaborate by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to grab my finer. There we go. Now we're going to use a little bit of lamp black to paint in the body. So we just need to give him uh, a head and a thorax. I'm going to grab a little bit of lamp black. Don't need a ton of it on your palette. You just need a drop because we're not using much. And I'm using a smaller rigger. You can use a liner brush or a small round if you prefer. So a little bit of lamp black just to base in his head and thorax. This little chesty part here on his upper body. And then I'm going to use either a liner or a rigger to paint in the stripes on our bee. So I'm just using a very loose few strokes to put in that first that band, the stripe, and then I'm doing the same thing at the bottom of the thorax. Just a few loose strokes, nothing fancy. A couple of little antenna. And then feet. He's got to have feet. So he's got two up here. So little dots just to form his legs. And the same on this side. So he's got feet. Little tiny dots. I just do it with a liner brush. It works just fine. If you have better control using a stylus, then by all means, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to dry this real quick. We're going to add a highlight to our little bee here once the paint is dry. And then we're going to work on our lettering. So the highlight on this little guy is actually a float of warm white and it's very heavily thinned. If you're concerned about getting the control, then switch to, instead of a white, use a gray. So I'm going to put a little float. Of course, it would help if I left paint in the brush. Here we go. So a little float of warm white on the upper right and the same thing on his head. It's just a tiny little float. And it's not a very strong one. It's just enough to sort of separate those sections of his body. And then we're going to add some final little highlights with um, my liner. I'm going to use my 10-aught. 
It's my Tenot Extra Long Detail Liner. It's my favorite liner. And I'm going to thin out a little bit of warm white. And this is just some fine little lines over top of the black and the yellow on the upper right. Just super fine. And don't forget to add a little final highlight on the other. Just needs a little dip dot. So little tiny fine lines right there. And our B is just about done. We're going to add some final details all the way around in a little bit. But right now we're going to worry about this lettering. Now I'm using a 3 8 angled shader for this step. And I'm going to come into a little bit of that um, that berry cobbler. I'm going to thin some of that out and we're going to use a float of that. And I put it on the wrong side. I usually put it on the on the right side, but today we're going to do it on the left because I put the highlights on the B that way. So I'm just going to put a float like that. So on the back inside, and again, these are loose, they're rough, they're not perfect. So all this little float is going to do is lift this lettering off of the background a little. That's all it's going to do. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So I think I'm happy with that a little bit. And you can go right over the lettering. That's uh, I like to do this before I do anything else, before we paint in the lettering, because you can clean it up. So if it goes over top of the lettering, it's an easy fix. So if you, you know, mess it up and it doesn't go the way you want it to, or if it goes over top of the lettering, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time cleaning it up. So again, not a neat and tidy float, doesn't need to be. There's nothing about this piece that is intended to be utterly perfect. So we have nice little shadow on the background of our lettering and that's going to help lift our lettering up. So I have two riggers on my table. I have this one. This is my 10 aught or a zero. And I have this one, which is a number two. These are the two sizes that I use the most, which is the zero and the two. I'm going to use my number two for the larger lettering and the zero I'm going to use for the smaller lettering. Now you can choose any one of these pinks to do the lettering or you can choose the white if you want to, whichever you feel is going to stand out most. I think I'm going to use the white today. Um, I used both the berry cobbler on one and I used a bright pink on the other, but I think I'm going to use the white today. And this is pretty straightforward. Again, this lettering does not need to be perfect. So we're going to use a little bit of warm white. And we're just going to stroke this lettering in very loosely. It is not perfect. I kind of wanted this one to have a, I don't like the word primitive because it's not really a primitive, but I wanted it to have a very simplistic look nothing too elaborate. If I'd wanted it elaborate, I've used a different style of lettering altogether. So the nice thing about this rigger is that it has a square chisel edge. You've noticed that it, it squares off just like a flat brush. And so it makes it perfect for doing this type of lettering because you can control the width just by applying the pressure onto the brush. So when I press down, it fills that space quite nicely. And it has nice chisel edges. So it fills that space. It's ideal for doing this because it's just long enough that it has great snap.
and it opens up just wide enough to fill up to a quarter of an inch wide. A number two will fill up to a quarter of an inch wide, which is plenty for doing all sorts of, of lettering types. Now keep in mind that this all has a, a very loose finish. It's not going to be a meticulous, perfectly tool painted piece. It is not what we're looking for. This one, the whole point behind this is that it's going to have a very loose and relaxed feel right down to the lettering. Easy peasy. These work up really quick. And they're fun. And the great part about this is that even if you've got graphite lights showing when you're done, um, they're for the most part are going to disappear into this finish by the time we're done. So you don't have to beat yourself up if you, you know, you've got graphite light showing, but it's, it's not going to matter by the time we're finished with this piece. And any that are showing, we can erase. So not a big deal. There we go. So I'm going to switch to my smaller rigger which is either that 10 aught or a zero. You just need a small one. If you don't have those, you can always use a liner brush to do this. Um, it's not, as I said, it's not overly important at this point. So I like doing these little crossbars on these first. So then we can go ahead and do all of those vertical lines. That rigger just gives you a little more control than you would get. It just makes lettering so much simpler than you know, using a liner brush all the time. The liner is, is pointed, so it's hard to get nice square edges and square details with a pointed brush. Whereas with the rigger, you can do it in one stroke. I missed a little crossbar. There we go. Now you could use any one of the colors that's in this pattern. You could even use the greens or the yellows if you wanted to. Um, or you could use black too. Black would work. Entirely up to you. I think it's just a fun way to embellish something. And like I said, you could change your mind and not use this lettering at all. You could add your own. It could be a welcome sign. Take out the hearts and put in polka dots. You've got a completely different look. So we have our lettering stroked in. Again, it's loose. I'm not too worried about it. I like that that little shading, that little bit of shading just lifts the lettering up just enough. I don't know, it gives it a little elevation, makes it stand out against that pink. And so now we're going to start adding some fun little details to this. Did she? Poor Papa Doke. Uh, Judy Farmer is asking, what's the difference between a rigger and a liner? A rigger brush. That's a great question. A rigger brush. Let me show you. This is a liner. I'm going to use a water lily to show you. A liner brush comes to a point. You get a nice sharp point. It's essentially a very long round, a very long skinny round. So it comes to a point. A rigger is built 
although it's in a round ferrule, it's built like a flat brush. So when you press down on it, you get a chisel edge as opposed to a point. If I were to press down on the on a liner, it gives you a rounded edge like a round brush. And so that's the difference. Although they're, they look very similar when you put them side by side or press down on them, they have a completely different makeup. This one forms a blunt or a square chisel edge and the round forms a round or the liner, pardon me, forms a round edge like a round brush. So that's the difference between the two. And I like my riggers because they form that sharp chisel edge. So we have, this is my favorite liner. I love these ones. This is a Dynasty Micron Extra Long 10 aught Detail Liner. I like this one because of this. It's a long liner, comes to a really sharp point, and surprisingly holds a fair amount of paint. You wouldn't expect it to. So I'm going to thin out a little bit of mermaid tail with my liner brush. Just going to add lots of glaze to it because I want this paint fairly thin. And we're going to use that liner to do our little vines and tendrils. Tendrils. I love these brushes. Sharp, sharp, sharp. They have a great, come to a really great point and they have just enough snap that I can do those little things without them taking off. If you've got a brush that's got too much snap in them and you go to make nice little tight circles, sometimes you go halfway through the circle and all of a sudden it just goes shoots straight across. I don't have that problem with these because they have just that right amount of snap. They're a really nice liner brush. One of my favorites. So now we're going to start adding some fun little details. I'm thinking I need a little bit of a highlight on these leaves. They're just not popping for me. So I'm going to grab my 3 8 angle and a little bit of that limey, that, that lime, I think it's limey, light lime, sorry. Limeade, light lime. It's just an opaque light green. I'm just going to give a little highlight little float of that lighter value opposite my shadow just to make these leaves pop a little bit. That's it. Just a little float, nothing major. It's very loose. And now comes the fun part. I have two things we're going to use for this. We're going to use a, um, a white opaque gel pen. I'm using an Arteza. You can use Oh, my other one? Um, I don't know where my Uniball went. You can use the Uniball white opaque pen. I'm using an Arteza because that's one I could find. I don't know where my other one is. So I'm going to use that one. And this one is my Feng Tuan, Feng Tai one. I can never say that name. Um, this is my black 0.38 gel pen. This is what we're going to detail this with. And I love this because we're just going to add scribbly details around our leaves. And when I say scribbly, I mean scribbly. Nothing neat, nothing tidy. Just to outline, embellish the general shape of these leaves. It's not perfect. It can be in, on, around. Don't worry about getting them perfect. So you can use that one. If you're using a Uniball Signo, same thing. Why is it I can never find what I'm looking for? And I'm going to do the same thing to my daisies. This is where you get to do some fun things. I think, I think the lighting was a little too hot. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where you get to add some of those fun little fine details to these flowers. It's also where you can pop some of those little details and the shapes.
And again, they don't have to be perfect. They can be inside the line, inside the edges, outside the edges, it doesn't matter. I like these little details. And it also helps you add a little texture to the flowers. Instead of having these perfectly round edges at the tips, you can have them ruffled a little bit. You can overlap them. If you're not happy with your shadows, this will also fix a few little details like that. I rather like the more, you know, the ragged edge at the edges of my flowers. If I want more detail down the center of my flower, down the petals, I can sketch that in very lightly. This is just a fun way to add texture and detail with very little effort. And it works really well for this. And it also, look at the shape, it brings that flower to life really nicely. And it just gives them an overall softer appearance too. Now, whenever I'm using um, a fair amount of mixed media, as in this case, we're using some, some different media in combination with regular acrylic paints. It does change how you're going to have to think about varnishing things or finishing things off. Um, this gel pen, sometimes it'll react and sometimes it won't. It all depends on how long it's been sitting before you tried to varnish it. Um, I'm a very impatient painter. I like to have things you know, done. So I have a tendency to, uh, you know, jump the gun and I don't like to wait three to five days for things to dry well. I want to go out and, and set things right now. That's, that's just me. And so in order to do that, because I work with so many different media, I have to bear in mind that not everything is going to react well to acrylics, to varnishes, etc. So I usually go out to the garage with my DecoArt matte spray and I set everything. It's just a habit of mine. Just to avoid any possible conflicts or issues, I set everything. So out to the garage I go, and everything gets one to two light coats of DecoArt matte spray. If you use another setting spray, that's fine. It'll work just, it'll work well too. But my preference is the Americana uh, matte spray. That one I've had never had issues with. And so everything gets that, you know, two to three light coats of DecoArt matte spray before I varnish, just to avoid any potential conflicts. And that has worked well for me. So that's what I recommend. If you hit it with some matte spray first, then you don't have to worry about things conflicting or smearing or running. And just avoid the problem altogether. So I'm almost there. I see how it just makes these flowers stand up, stand out. I love that. And it adds a little bit of visual texture at the same time. So this is why when we were painting, I said not to worry too much about whether or not things were absolutely perfect, because it honestly, it didn't matter. As long as things went in the rough direction that we needed them to go, it's all good. What are we having for dinner tonight? I don't know. We're going out for dinner tonight. Yeah, we're not cooking. We're not cooking. I know that's strange. We very rarely do this, but um, we are going out to the Hilltop. It's sort of a pub-style restaurant here in Fredericton. It's been around for years. The food is, is good. Um, there's always something new on their menu. There's always something new on their menu. Uh, they do make a great steak, and their ribs are to die for. They do make really great ribs. So, uh, what kind of varnish do you use? I my favorite is Decor's Ultra Matte Varnish. It's a DuraClear. That's my favorite, but I prefer a low sheen to a high sheen. 
That's just my personal preference. I like the Ultra Matte for a couple of reasons. Um, it gives you that pop. There's that instant gratification when you're putting on a good coat of varnish. That pop of color that you get. You get that with the, the uh, matte spray. But I really like that low sheen of the Ultra Matte. It's a very flat, almost a dead flat finish. So and is the pen available on your website? Yes, we do have these. Feng Taiwan Black 0.38 gel pen. Ultra fine. It's super fine, it's, which is why I like it. Now, I'm going to do the same thing to my lettering. Again, it's just a sketchy line. I'm not worried about whether or not it's perfect. I just go around the outside edge. That's why I said don't worry too much. If you don't cover up all your graphite lines and don't get rid of them all, it's okay. They're just going to fall into the finish anyhow. And the little bumblebee, same thing, sketchy line around the outside edge of the wings, like so, little details. And then do the same thing around his body. You can add a few little dip dots and some sketchy lines for texture. I just think it's a fun way to finish off this little guy. He's fun. This part is just super, super easy. So as I said, don't worry about whether or not it's absolutely perfect. Those sketchy lines work in your favor. Just makes things a bit more interesting. Adds a little bit of visual texture and it ties the whole thing together. You're not having varying styles of things all over the place. Can you put a shiny varnish over a matte spray? Yes, you can, absolutely. Matte spray is just a sealer. All it does is set things. It's intended to um, adhere everything that you've worked with, and it gives you a nice uniform surface to put your varnish on. So yes, if you want to, if you prefer a gloss varnish, then by all means, go ahead and use it, and you can put it over top of the decor and matte spray quite easily. I'd love to have a number two rigger, however, I'll probably never own one. Two dollars and eighty-five cents for the brush, and seventeen dollars for shipping. <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Um, ideally, though, get a bunch of friends together. Order a bunch. Order whatever brushes you need. Um, use the coupon code Tracy M because your shipping's going to be the same. So then you could get a bunch of friends together and order whatever brushes you need. And I'm of the opinion that you can never have too many brushes. Order a bunch. Unfortunately, in this day and age, shipping is a necessary evil. So whenever I have to order something, I sort of combine a whole bunch of things at one time so that I'm not paying $17 in shipping for a $2 brush. <laughs> so. And we do have a coupon code with the brush guys. It's Tracy M. So if you need to order brushes, use that coupon code gives you an additional discount. So there we go. I have all of my detail stuff done. My lines. You can always add more if you want to. I like the curly cues. I like the sketchy look. That's just me. So I like that. And I'm going to put my scribbletcher down here in the lower corner. Now I have one last thing I wanted to do to this piece. I did not do it the first time around. The second one I painted, I did. I used this white gel pen. And I added some more little dip dots coming out from the center onto the petals, just using that bright white. I just found that it there's something about having those little dots out over the edges onto the petals that just softens the centers of these and makes the flowers a little brighter. So I just took the little white gel pen and a few more dip dots. Hello from Michigan. This is just a, it's such a quick and easy piece to paint. 
and it's fun. It's very rewarding to get a piece finished, and then it comes out really cute no matter what. Uh, we got a question from Sue Potts. Hi, Sue. I'm finding a difficult time finding deco art spray varnishes in Canada. A country bear. Country bear. Uh, they are hard to find, um, partially because they're difficult to get across the border. So your best bet, uh, stockade.ca, if they don't have it, then Country Bear Woodcrafts at Creations. Country Bear, uh, they're based in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Their shipping is very reasonable. And uh, he has a really great selection because he is a Decawart distributor. So that we go. I wanted to throw a few more little dip dots in. I love this, like a white gel pen, opaque white gel pen. There's a variety of them. Um, I used either the Sarteza. These ones are a little pricey. I also used the um, the white gel pen from Uniball, which is another good one. But honestly, there's a variety of them on the market that are uh, reasonably priced. The Arteza ones are a little higher priced, but they're uh, the quality of them is quite nice. I've been very impressed. So there we go. That's our bee honey. Be my honey. <laughs> Super easy. A cute piece, I think. I think it's a cute piece. I also used uh, this. This is one of those little slot stands. I just painted it uh, carousel pink to boom. stick my piece in. And boom, I've got a cute little Valentine's sign for my entryway on Valentine's Day. Super easy. Lots of fun. <laughs> Great fun. Oh my God! What happened to this camera? Which one? <laughs> you shut sure, you shut the lights off? Yeah, it's dark as pitch in here. <laughs> um, what was this? Oh, uh, what is the membership project for February? Ah, that's a secret. Yeah, you'll find out Wednesday. Yeah, you'll find out Wednesday. Should be I fun. Not sure that we're going to have some fun in February. We're going to have some fun in February. And get this. You don't need anything special as far as Surface goes. Yes. You know, all you need is a journal page. So we're going to have some fun with some mixed media journal. I just realized one of those paintings is very, very crooked. <laughs> yeah, I wonder which one. I just happened to look down at the screen and went, oh, my goodness. Yeah, it looks like it's falling off the edge of the earth. <laughs> and boop, boop. Boop. Oh, we got the wheel. Excellent. So we have four things to give away today. First, we have the three Valentine's themed giveaways. In there, we have uh, my favorite heart-shaped brush cleaner, a little brush, a tool for cleaning your stencil brushes and your brushes. They're fantastic. Um, have a cute little heart-shaped one for you. There is a heart stencil. A gorgeous set of Tombow uh, professional artist pencils are in there as well, plus a few other little odds and sods we have a really cool new uh mini stencil for you for the month of february it's a rose we have a little rose stencil this time around so to oh, let's face it hearts and flowers for the month of february you gotta have that right so we have a lovely little rose stencil for you this this time around so if you're placing an order on the website and it has to be shipped to you so if it's uh, stencils or patterns or whatever um we always throw one of those in those are included so it'll be fun. I like the little rose thing. Um, and we have a bunch planned for the rest of the year. Just think playing cards. We've got great little minis coming up. You ready to spin this wheel? I am. Let's spin it. Yeah, 125 names today. Nice. So we got a few names. Just we a did. few. Let's see who the first one is. And <laughs> Cindy Braden. <laughs> did you put me in twice like you promised? <laughs> 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 that's one promise he can't keep Connie Larson, Connie Larson. awesome Anelda thank you I don't know what the heck everybody likes my hair I, it's driving me insane but <laughs> it is gray at least I don't look like I've been in a wind tunnel That yesterday I looked like I'd been in a wind tunnel goodness i'm gonna to have to clean Nailed up it. my mouse um my membership group is painting orchids on uh, wednesday for their live class i'm so excited about this one um 
they've also uh, had a couple of challenges, um, design challenges this month for the month of January and uh, a, a flower study or an orchid study challenge this month. So we've got a bunch of prizes to give away on Wednesday night to my membership group. Been in the wheel. <laughs> Waiting for it. There it goes. Mm -hmm. doo, doo, doo. Sue Schreiber. Nice. So as always, um, if your name is called for one of these prizes, uh, go to the website. On the homepage, down in the lower right-hand corner of the homepage on my website is a little speech bubble. Click on that and send us your shipping information. We hang on to the giveaway prizes for two weeks. If we haven't received any shipping information or can't locate it, then the prize goes back in the box. What did you do? <laughs> oh, you knocked off the name. Yeah. <laughs> and who is it this time? Who is it this time? Who is it this time? <laughs> Linda Pilgrim. Linda Pilgrim. There's a new name. So, Linda, don't forget to go to the website at tracymoreau.net. Click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner of the homepage and send us your shipping information so we can get your prize out to you. And then we have that great little giveaway courtesy of uh, the Stencil Studio. I think you're going to love this. We've got a couple of minis for you. And then this beautiful set. Um, these are just gorgeous stencils. This is the Mistletoe Wreath set. It's a two-piece stencil set. Um, it's gorgeous, and they're in an A4 size format, plus two minis. Those are going to some lucky winner today, too. And let's find out who. Darlene Cartmel. Hey, Darlene. So Darlene gets that great set of stencils from the Stencil Studio. So exciting. I, I'm really having a lot of fun with the stencils that we've received from them. They're really, really nice. So next Saturday, we're going to be doing a little bit of crafty stuff. Plus, we're going to be doing some painting and some really... Not ornate, but some elegant looking uh, brush lettering on a perfume tray for a lady's bedroom. Now, the pattern, the one that I'm painting, it's got a black background, but we're going to include instructions for a white background as well. So if you're not into black backgrounds, we're going to show you how to do a white one as well. So the pattern will have those instructions in it. It will have line drawings and uh, everything that you need to complete this piece, plus a complete supply list. There's no stencils involved. So you're going to have a little bit of fun with that. Um, we will not have a kit for this one. The, the surfaces are actually easily available anywhere, but can also be done on almost anything. So the design itself is not limited to one specific shape. But I'm going to walk you through how to create this surface because it's a fun one. And I think that that's it for us this week. And thank you so much, as always, for watching. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Go and hit the big red subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you know when we go live and when we post new video. And if you watch us on Facebook, hit the follow button on the Tracy Morrow Live page. We'd appreciate it. It helps us out a great deal. And always keep in mind that the Facebook stars and the super chat donations from the YouTube channel go to support our local SPCA. So thanks again, you guys, for watching every Saturday. We love you, and please stay safe. Mwah. Pet your dog. Pet your dog. <laughs>